There's things that these athletes and coaches and broadcasters do that business people like us can learn from, that can help us wake up and be better at what we do for our clients, for our customers, and for the companies that we represent. And what the best do is they embrace pressure. Trust me, it's amazing to me. Because I played tennis, I, trust me, I stood there at five all in the third set against the University of Michigan, nervous as heck that I was trying to win that match. And I watch these guys now. John Smoltz wanted the ball. He wanted the ball in the bottom of the ninth. You know, when so many people, I see, you see a shortstop or a first baseman going, oh, don't, don't make it come to me. But the guys in the big leagues, they want them to ground out to him. They want to throw that final out to first base. They want the ball. They want it. They love pressure. Watch, I said, let me ask you a question, man. I said, what do you think is the difference between the guys and the girls out on tour that are one to 10 on the money list, you know, that are winning golf tournaments, that are in the majors, that are holding trophies above their head on Sunday night. What's the difference between them and everybody else? What do you think the difference is? And he says, without question, Mal, their ability to recover from adversity faster than everybody else. He said, that's the difference, without question. And that's the difference in our worlds, right? It's, it's the ability to recover from the no faster than everybody else so that we can go get the yes. What mattered wasn't that I gave him a plan and he goes, wow, that looks great. What mattered is I had to go get these guys. I had to go sign them. When your boss taps you on the shoulder and invites you to a meeting or invites you to a dinner and you kind of get excited that you get to go to that one dinner or that meeting that you, you really aren't surprised you're kind of in or whatever it might be or you do that for Don't just be excited that you got invited to it. That's just the beginning. You got a seat at the table, good for you. Do something with it. Say something that they don't expect you to say. That's when you gotta wow them. That's when you gotta have something up your sleeve and know something that nobody else in that room thinks you know. What I mean by communicate is they listen, right? We're all in sales, we're all in the relationship business and what makes you good at what you do is not how much you say, right, but how much you listen. And I think that the best coaches in the world, and I'll tell you some stories about Doc Rivers and Tom Mizzo and these guys, that they listen. They listen to their players. They listen to their fans. They listen to their customers. And that's how they win. I was recruiting a, a big league baseball player, a guy by the name of Mark DeRosa. Well, long story short, he gets called up to the big leagues. And I thought, you know, this is the kind of guy I want to represent. He was a quarterback at Penn, sharp guy, married to a very nice woman. And I thought, this is the kind of guy I want to get. So. I'm thinking, how do I, you know, start to build my favorite column with him? How do I sort of get in his world a little bit? How do I act like I have the business before I have the business? So I called this local magazine in Atlanta, and I literally begged this lady in the, that, that I knew to do this piece on DeRosa. So next Tuesday, he comes up to the office. Well, I intentionally put the lady for the interview on the whole other side of the office, okay? I get all the way around the office, the whole time we're walking around, I am just crushing him with questions, right? I'm just asking so many questions so that I can keep getting in his world. So he gets done with the interview, and I start chipping away over the next couple weeks at my list of things to do, right? To build my favor column up with him, to keep giving and giving and giving to him. And so two weeks later, he signed with us and have represented him ever since. But the story, right, is it's just, it's, it's given and given and given and connecting, not just communicating with him so that it was impossible for him to say no. And then when I got in front of him and I had that opportunity that I knew that I could deliver against all the things that I felt like he really needed. And it's Katie Francoeur, Jeff's wife, and she says, oh my gosh, Molly, Jeff just got hit by a pitch on the left side of his face fastball it was probably going 98 miles an hour and it just totally slammed him right in the left side of his face and she says we're on our way to the hospital and all of a sudden Jeff goes give me the phone and he jumps on the phone he goes Mom, I'm fine I'm gonna be fine he goes I gotta go get it looked out I can see fine it hurts like crazy but I'm gonna be okay but you know the thing is and he's going it he said Mom, I'm swinging the bat so good I just got to get back into the box Talk about fearless urgency. I mean, talk about a guy that gets hit by a 98 mile an hour fastball in his face, okay? And all he wants to do is get back in the box and swing the bat. It's having so much passion for winning and for being better than everybody else that it suffocates any fear you have. Or that little guy that says, maybe you can't do it, maybe you won't win, maybe you won't close the sale, maybe you won't get that deal. That doesn't help you. Get rid of that little guy.